So in this course, we have learned how to um, describe the dispersion of electrons and phonons in a crystal. Um, in reality, crystals, uh, the real crystals are quite complex entities and description of uh, these dispersions or band diagrams uh, in a three-dimensional crystals can be quite complex. Uh, in this short module, we would have a look at how to read um, uh, dispersion curves and band diagrams of uh, real solids. The flavor of uh, what kind of curves these are. So these are a few band diagrams of uh, um, silicon and gallium arsenide. Uh, some of them are phonon. Uh, dispersions while other are electron band diagrams and as you can see they look quite uh, complex uh, there are a few things to be noticed here uh, the x axis or the horizontal axis here is the wave vector and you are seeing some uh, strange looking symbols over here and on the y axis you have energies um, here the energy uh, in this case is uh, milli electron volts and here the energy is a few electron volts uh, again the energy here is milli electron volts and here it's a few electron volts so uh, and apart from this you see many many uh, quite a complex structure of lines in each of these dispersion and band diagrams so uh, in this module, we would uh, uh, look at how these diagrams are drawn and what uh, these different symbols in these diagram mean. So, so to uh, state the problem, uh, the exact nature of problem we are going to discuss in this lecture is that if you consider uh, electrons and phonons as waves, and those electrons and phonons, uh, they can move in different directions in a crystal. Uh, so the question is, can we plot all the possible energies these electrons and phonons can uh, have while propagating in different directions in a crystal? And is it possible to draw all those different energies uh, which are possible in a crystal in one uh, graph? So that's the nature of the problem. And if you look at the three-dimensional structure of a solid uh, and imagine you have electronic wave and phonon waves which can propagate in different directions within the crystal, uh, it looks quite a difficult problem to represent all those different directions or different directions of interest in just one graph because there can be simply many, many directions possible. Uh, for those waves to propagate in and then you have to plot the dispersion of those waves in all those different directions which are of interest for a crystal. Uh, so we're gonna uh, see the problem uh, slightly uh, in a different way. So instead of um, just dealing with a large set of lattice points, we would consider the lattice as consisting or, or the crystal as consisting of uh, different planes uh, uh, or families of planes described here um, in a two-dimensional representation and here you have a set of planes or families of planes in a three dimensions and uh, we would uh, then ask the questions that what uh, what are the possible energies those electron waves which may be propagating in a certain direction through a certain set of families of planes so what can be the possible energies these electrons or this phonon wave can have this would make the problem a lot easier to solve if instead of the latest point we transfer our problem to motion of uh, plane wave through atomic planes uh, or through families of with this problem so, of atomic planes so we know that we can represent a whole set of families of planes um, by just one point uh, in the reciprocal lattice and those points makes the reci uh, reciprocal lattice itself so for example you consider this two-dimensional um, uh, crystal 
in this two dimensional crystal we can draw many many different set of planes for example you have a zero one plane uh, which would be um, along this direction a set of family of planes along this direction and uh, which forms a family of plane then you have one zero plane which uh, represent planes which are horizontals uh, then you have planes which have half the distance of a zero one the interatomic distance these red ones uh, which again uh, covers all the redis point and zero two and similarly you have these um, slanted uh, planes which are which form one 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 family of planes so you have all those different planes and uh, the good thing is that you can represent a whole set of uh, these planes by just one point in the reciprocal lattice uh, in the reciprocal space uh, which is indexed by the uh, Miller indices or Miller indices of the corresponding families of planes. So that's the nice point about the reciprocal lattice uh, that each point here represent a set certain specific uh, plane uh, family of planes and not just uh, one plane. And all all those dif different uh, lattice points would correspond to different uh, set of planes. Of course, of interest would be just a few of these lattice points, and the rest we would ignore because they would uh, these large uh, lattice points they would correspond to um, lattice planes which are very close to each other, and they are basically not of that much interest for our description. So now, if we talk about uh, energies of electrons or phonons, which Let's say if they propagate through this uh, crystal, uh, then that wave, uh, whether that is of a lattice vibration or whether that is of an electron, it would have a certain wave vector uh, with a certain magnitude. And because we can definitely, uh, for example, we can describe the direction of propagation of that wave with respect to uh, a certain lattice plane, for example, Let's say this wave is perpendicular to a 111 set of planes. So then we can, and it has a lattice, uh, a certain wavelength. So we can also find its wave vector, which would be simply uh, 2 pi by lambda to the magnitude of the wave vector would be 2 pi by lambda. We know the direction and we can simply then identify that this plane uh, by a point in the reciprocal space. So that point. Uh, with a specific k uh, magnitude would represent a certain wavelength and the position of this point in the k space would tell us uh, in which direction this plane uh, this wave would be propagating and here it would seem that it's propagating uh, um, perpendicular to these 111 one, one, uh, one, one planes here represented by 1 one, 1 miller indices so that's uh, a brief uh, introduction to description of uh, pro these propagating waves in a reciprocal space. So the problem of uh, propagation, this representation of uh, propagating electron and phonon waves in a solid can be made easier by the fact that uh, the electrons and phonons uh, and their dispersion of both these entities it is periodic in k space which means that you can define a range of k values um, in which the dispersion uh, is unique and for all the rest of the k points uh, that dispersion uh, this unique dispersion is basically repeated again and again this uh, range of k points uh, which represent um, uh, these unique values of the dispersion uh, uh, is called as the first billion zone. So we start with the two-dimensional case. Uh, so you have these lattice points, and these lattice points you can uh, connect. Uh, so you start with a certain zero zero point, connected to the nearest neighbor, draw the bisector, and you get a region of uh, k points in your k space, which is called as the first billion zone in this uh, in this two-dimensional configuration. And in the next step. Uh, this uh, in the next step uh, you connect it to the next nearest neighbor and uh, 
uh, you uh, again draw a bisector uh, and then you get the second uh, brilliant zone so the first brilliant zone is basically the Wigner site cell uh, in the reciprocal lattice uh, also called as the first brilliant zone uh, so that is uh, and then you can have uh, you can label all your lattice points um, in this uh, uh, reciprocal lattice uh, later space so uh, how to describe uh, so to to describe the electron or latest wave it's important to restrict yourself to the first brilliant zone so let's uh, zoom in into this region of the first brilliant zone because that's the only important uh, 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 region of k space for us so any k value which is in the first brilliant zone uh, would represent uh, as uh, a plane can represent uh, a a wave of either electron or phonon propagating in a specific direction so the recipe is the following that uh, you choose a, a certain uh, lattice point which is uh, in the uh, which has a low index uh, these are called as uh, special symmetry points uh, in any crystal uh, for a certain reason we don't have enough time to explain that but you can choose these low symmetry a low index points um, uh, and you can ignore those points which have higher index for example these index uh, these points would have uh, larger miller indices so you ignore those so we have for example uh, these three lattice points uh, uh, with lower miller indices here and this is uh, the zero uh, the origin of the reciprocal space uh then you uh, move along the one of the uh the, those lattice points until you reach the edge of the brilliant zone which is here and then you can uh, identify that point in the form of a direction and the directions are normally um, represented by one one uh, by um, the square brackets instead of these curly brackets so the curly bracket uh, represent Miller indices of planes 1 1 so which forms a family of lattice plane then 1 1 square bracket would represent a direction which is perpendicular to this family of lattice plane so this point would represent uh, a plane wave uh, which is propagating perpendicular to this 1 1 family of planes uh, such that the wavelength of that a particular plane wave uh, is exactly equal to the periodicity of the planes uh, in this propagation direction uh, and so you can have k values starting from zero up to the edge of this brilliant zone and uh, so as you move along uh, the, this line uh, up to the brilliant zone the wavelength decreases until uh, you reach this point where the wavelength is equal to the interatomic distance uh, the smaller uh, the points which are closer to the zero 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 represent very long wavelength uh, uh, wavelength so along this line you have a range of different wavelengths uh, all of these uh, wavelengths or all these wave vectors represent um, electronic or phonon waves uh, propagating in one one direction and similarly would be the case uh, along zero one and one zero direction as well so you have your uh, reciprocal uh, your crit you have defined uh, so-called critical points uh, in your first brilliant zone but important to note here is that uh, this zero one direction uh, has more or less the same physics asks uh, if you compare it to one zero point so if you look at zero one family of planes uh, and you look at a one zero family of planes they look exactly similar depending on uh, it entirely depends on in which direction you uh, define your uh, uh, x y and z so these two uh, so normally either you stick to a zero one or a one zero i don't repeat those two points so you just uh, have one point which represent a similar uh, physics so 
that's uh, the kind of uh, thing we would do so and expand so this going into the three into dimension, three dimension. Uh, uh, again sticking to the cubic uh, primitive uh, crystals uh, it's reciprocal um, uh, it's reciprocal uh, brilliant, uh, first brilliant zone is again a cubic uh, with each sides given by 2 pi by a 2 pi by a 2 pi by a so then again what you do is you you do have only one lattice point in the uh, first brilliant zone because that's what uh, brilliant zones are they do have only one lattice points in there so you and that lattice point lies at 0 0 0 and then you draw lines from this 0 0 0 point to the uh, critical points which you have described uh, in different uh, directions for example uh, along 100 zero zero direction you have one lattice point here if you go along 100 zero zero direction you would have another lattice point somewhere here and in the middle you have this uh, where the brilliant zone would cut this line and that point would represent this 100 zero zero direction similarly if you go along this direction uh, uh, if you go further, you would reach uh, one 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 lattice point. Uh, but because at this point, uh, you describe your special point where uh, this line, which connects this zero to zero with one one one, it cuts the first billion zone. So that would be the special point in the first billion zone. And similarly, if you move in this direction, this is would be your first uh, uh, this is where the first brilliant zone would cut so these are the three critical points we have described uh, and are usually described for a cubic system and these three represent uh, so called symmetry points because uh, all these three uh, plane they, they the, these three points represent specific directions and these directions are perpendicular to a specific family of planes and these family of planes have uh, unique symmetries. So a 100 zero zero plane uh, has its own symmetry. This, these planes have their own symmetry elements. Similarly, a 111 plane has its own symmetry and 110 plane has its own symmetry. And these three points which you have chosen in a cubic system, they have higher symmetries than other lattice points. So that's why we ignore the rest and we are only interested in these three directions here. So just to let you know that uh, you would also have a lattice point which would be a 0, uh, 1, 0 or a 0, 0, 1. Uh, so here uh, you have along uh, one axis, you can have it along the other two, two axis, but those direction would be exactly, uh, would, should have exactly the same physics as that of a 1, 0, 0. So we ignore uh, those directions. So you only, uh, uh, give uh, label unique uh, points unique symmetry points in the first brilliant zone uh, you, you like one 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 point would have eight similar points because each cube uh, each edge of the cube would represent uh, a one 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 like a lattice plane so but we only represent one of it and not all eight of them so then come the labeling part. You have identified your critical points in the first brilliant zones, uh, which represent different directions uh, of motion um, along different waves. So uh, uh, then you can label these critical points. So the center of the Wigner site cell or the center of the brilliant zone is normally uh, denoted by uh, gamma uh, and is called as a gamma point. So the center point is called gamma point. Um, then you have points uh, which are inside the first uh, brilliant zone. They are represented by a certain Greek uh, letter, for example, gamma. Uh, we would see there are other points as well. And uh, then the points at uh, on the surface of the first brilliant zone, like these three points we have shown here, they are on the surface of the brilliant zone. They are represented by a certain Roman letter. So for a cubic crystal, this is how it looks. Uh, this point uh, is represented by a Roman letter R. This point uh, represented by a Roman letter M, this point represents a Roman letter X, and each of these letters represent a certain propagation direction. Uh, you can be a bit more metic meticulous about it. For example, uh, going from gamma to R, you pass it through a certain point, uh, like uh, gamma to R. Uh, 
at that point would lie inside the first with it, it would be well inside the first breeding zone and uh, this is represented by a greek letter um delta inverse uh, capital delta uh, similarly going from gamma to n m uh, you have a lattice point sigma uh, not a lattice point but a, a point which you denote as sigma and similarly you uh, going from gamma to x you have a point through which you pass through which we call as delta so these are the uh, three different paths by which you go from gamma point to these points on the surface of the first bridging zone so these are just marked for uh, uh, by their names uh, as in this representation so remember uh, there is only one lattice point in all of that cube and this is the gamma point uh, these diff other points are not gamma points the, the other are not lattice points they are just uh, some critical points we have identified to uh, identify different propagation direction uh, for a specific crystal so uh, what do these lines would mean so for example gamma x line would represent all those different waves which move along the x direction and this would be for example if they move along uh, these uh, perpendicular to these 100 zero zero planes for example so uh, all those waves electronic or phononic waves which move perpendicular to 100 with a specific wavelength or a specific k point uh, would be represented on this line along uh, gamma x similarly uh, if you have a wave which move uh, uh, across 110 set of plane, set of planes then it would be represented by uh, on this line along gamma m and similarly if play waves are moving along 111 they would rep be represented by this line going from gamma to r so these are uh, the representations of uh, various uh, directions of wave propagation in a certain crystal and these are valid for both electronic waves and for uh, lattice waves We can extend our discussion to more uh, complex uh, later structure than a simple cubic. Uh, for example, um, you take a phase centered cubic system, uh, an FCC system, you can define a primitive unit cell uh, represented by these primitive lattice vectors A1, A2, N, A3. And using this recipe, you can find your reciprocal lattice vectors um, and then plot your reciprocal lattice. Uh, and it turns out that the reciprocal lattice of an FCC is actually a BCC uh, structure. So uh, that's true for the reverse as well. So if you take uh, a real crystal, which is a BCC crystal, and take uh, its reciprocal lattice vector, you would end up having uh, an FCC crystal. So in a BCC crystal, for example, if you start with a BCC crystal, and you define, uh, you can also define a Wigner side cell. So that's your real crystal, and you have defined a Wigner side cell in your real space. Uh, so, such so that this Wigner side cell has only one lattice point in the center. So, uh, this would be a Wigner side cell uh, in real space for a BCC crystal. But if you look at a Wigner side cell uh, of the same crystal in reciprocal space, it would look like that of a a uh, Wigner side cell of a uh, FCC crystal uh, which we have already seen it looks something like this and this Wigner side cell in the reciprocal space is called as a Brillouin zone similarly if you take a Wigner side cell in real space of an FCC crystal uh, which looks something like this uh, uh, and contain only one lattice point in the FCC crystal you take the reciprocal uh, of of such a Wigner side cell and you get a Wigner side cell in the reciprocal space uh, of an FCC crystal and the uh, which would be uh, your brilliant zone it looks like this so the uh, brilliant zone of a BCC looks like this and the BCC 
the brilliant zone on FCC crystal looks something like this, uh, which is something we have seen before. So uh, you can also define uh, those critical points uh, in FCC and BCC um, uh, crystal as well. So this is the uh, uh, brilliant zone of the FCC crystal or the beginner side cell of the FCC crystal in the reciprocal space. Uh, you have this gamma point uh, which is in the center. Then you have these kx, ky, kz, these three different directions. Uh, you so if you the uh, you can define uh, different uh, uh, high symmetry points in here. So some of the important high symmetry points are the following. So um, the intersection which uh, point which start from 0, 0, 0 and which goes towards the 1, 0, 0 direction. So let's say one you have a 1, 0, 0 direction. So you have one latest point here at the gamma point. The next latest point in the next neighboring cell would be somewhere here. And uh, let's say there's a 1, 0, 0 direction or a 0, 1, 0 direction or a 0, 0, 1 direction. All three of them are similar. So if the 1, 0, 0 direction uh, latest point is somewhere here, then you draw a line towards that direction until you reach the uh, brilliant zone edge and that point is represented by an x uh, and this point uh, all the k values which start from gamma and end up at x uh, they would represent k k values for all those waves which move along the 100 set of planes uh, this uh, line is called as a gamma x line in the reciprocal space and uh, this line is called a delta line. Um, you can also sometimes it's conventional to identify the middle of this line and uh, give, give it a name delta. So that's uh, but overall this path can also be called as a delta path which start from gamma and which end at the x point. So, and we do represent x point just once because we know that an, a similar x point lies here on this direction it lies here and it would also be, there would be three other such similar points as well. Uh, but we just identify one of them because for all the rest the physics uh, would be exactly the same. And the next important point is the uh, direction, intersection direction with the 110 direction. So that would be, um, let's say if you go in this direction, which is uh, 110. So if you go into 110 direction, you go along that until you reach the edge uh, of the brilliant zone. And you call this point as a K point, which points towards 110, which means that all those K values which lie on this line, it would represent those waves which propag uh, propagate perpendicular to 110 set of planes or um, uh, the family of that plane. Uh, this path is represented by a sigma, a capital sigma. So the center point on this path is labeled as sigma. Uh, <clears throat> then the third important direction here is the 111 direction. So the 111 direction uh, is uh, labeled here with an, an index n. So it is basically L which is at the center of this plane. So you start from gamma until you reach the center of this uh, um, uh, this plane, uh, octagonal plane uh, in the first billion zone. And that center, is, the center of that plane is called as the L point, which represents the direction 111. Uh, and this path is represented by inverse delta point. So, uh, inverse lambda point. Uh, one important distinction I would like to make is between x, l and the k point is that x point is exactly in the center of two lattice points. Similarly, l point is also um, between exactly in the center of two lattice points. So one is a zero, 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 zero and the one other would be if you go along one, one, one direction. Uh, but this k point uh, is not in the center of two lattice point, it is displaced from the center. So that's an important distinction which would become. Uh, uh, so similarly, later. you can do a similar exercise for a BCC 
uh, BCC um, uh, brilliant zone looks like this. Uh, you have these three important directions H, uh, one represented by H, which represent a 100 direction. Then you have the other one is P. So this gamma from gamma to P would represent uh, the 111 direction. And then you have gamma to N, uh, where this N would represent a, um, a 110 direction or the 110 set of planes. Let's start um, uh, and look at a, a few examples in real crystals. Um, so I would start with an example of diamond. So diamond has <clears throat> an FCC lattice uh, with a basis of carbon atoms such that uh, the basis consists of two atoms. So uh, a BCC, uh, so uh, an FCC, a regular FCC lattice can consist of eight uh, or four uh, lattice points, uh, but because in carbon uh, it has a lattice of two atoms, so a unit, a conventional unit cell of uh, diamond uh, would consist of eight carbon atoms. So it is basically an FCC lattice with a uh, basis of two atoms. So it's um, brilliant zone would be that of a uh, uh, FCC lattice, which looks something like this, as we uh, shown uh, as, as we showed before. Uh, now the question is, what would be the electronic and phonon dispersion, uh, or the electronic band and phonon dispersion for such a crystal like this? And normally these, uh, so you, you, you have to do a full detailed calculations and normally these calculations are done um, computationally. So the couple of important uh, methods which are used are, uh, for example, you have a collection of different methods which is called as ab initial methods. In ab initial methods, you solve the eigenvalue equations uh, uh, using by, uh, selecting a certain suitable basis set. Uh, for example, you can, for to find the phonon dispersion, you can solve the ab initio method for atomic displacements uh, by choosing a suitable set of uh, displacement, atomic displacement in a unit cell, and solve for the whole solid. Um, or you can also uh, have a basis of, for electronic waves, you select a basis of uh, atomic orbitals and uh, solve it for um, a certain structure. Uh, in that case, the method is called as a uh, hard refock, uh, but these are evolution methods, uh, but usually they require higher computational powers. Uh, another method which is most common for electron um, uh, dispersion are called a so-called so -called density functional method in which you try to calculate a, an appropriate electron density function, uh, or so-called functional. Uh, that's a more average approach uh, for the electronic densities, uh, but there's a, a common computational technique to, uh, to, to, <clears throat> to find the dispersion. So the techniques we have used in this uh, course are just for very simple cases, uh, one-dimensional cases, and for three-dimensional, you have to rely on these computational techniques. Here is uh, a, a plot of uh, phonon dispersion for which has been calculated uh, by some one of these uh, ab initio methods uh, for diamond structure. 
and it looks something like this. So let's try to decipher what all these different uh, what these different lines mean here. So you can represent, uh, you can already see these gamma points here. So a gamma point here and a gamma point here. So these two points would represent k equals to zero point, which are, is in the center of your uh, brilliant zone. Then if you look at uh, this part of the dispersion, so uh, the k values start from gamma and it ends at L a capital L, where capital L represents this one, one, one direction or this one uh, or a direction which is perpendicular to one, one, one uh, family of planes. So, uh, so this, these, all these, so you have here k equals to zero and here you have uh, equals to k equals to pi by wh whatever the periodicity of planes is along one, one, one direction here. So that would be pi by that periodicity. And uh, in between, you have all the k values uh, which are possible um, within the first billion zone given by the periodic boundary condition. So for each k values, these are the energies which are allowed for um, this phonon to propagate inside in this solid in this particular direction. So a phonons which uh, or latest vibrations which can move in one 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 direction they can have these four different energies um, possible uh, and depending on their wavelength they would have these four uh, different values of these four energies depending on where they are lying within um, this part of the dispersion curve uh, now if you look on the left hand side of this gamma point uh, you have uh, a different dispersion as compared to the one on the right hand side and the reason is uh, we haven't uh, it's uh, it should be ideally symmetric but here we have only represented half of the brilliant zone because the left half in which it would move in the negative direction to 111 so l would represent 111 direction but in one uh, moving by of wave moving in one direction and minus l would represent wave in, along the same axis but in the opposite direction so because both would have exactly similar uh, dispersion energy so usually it's convenient not to plot that because it's already understood so on the left hand side it's plotted a different uh, direction which is the gamma x direction so the idea is to explore all the different directions um, which can be interesting in this particular crystal so gamma x line the gamma x direction uh, which has uh, this delta path along uh, which lies along this delta path this is an interesting direction so uh, uh, these energies which are represent here they uh, represent all the k values which lies from on from this gamma x line so in the center you would have this delta point but uh, as you move from gamma to x the k value increases uh, until it you reaches pi by whatever the periodicity is along this one zero zero direction of this plane so which would be this direction so uh, whatever the periodicity is along this direction in the in this crystal uh, uh, that would be the pi by that periodicity value here so in this case again you have uh, for each k value which can be in this part of the brilliant zone you can have four different energies possible for the latest vibration depending on what wavelengths they have in this first billion zone. Then you have this other gamma point. In this case, uh, the gamma is plotted here is from gamma to k. So that is this plane which is k represents the direction which is perpendicular to one one zero set of planes, which is in this direction, um, for each k value, uh, you have six uh, different uh, energies which are possible for the latest vibration to move in this direction. So in this case, so you have seen already uh, how does the dispersion would look like in three different um, directions in a crystal and these three directions are high symmetry directions in this crystal um, so 
uh, we have no more or less a, uh, a very nice description of uh, a three-dimensional dispersion of the crystal. So that's a very compact way to describe it in this form. Uh, there will be one segment here, uh, which uh, is shown here, uh, that's uh, slightly different. Uh, so one important thing you need to realize is that uh, if uh, the uh, at the center point between two neighboring points, let's say at x, where x is the center point between this lattice point in the reciprocal space and the one which is above here, there here lies this uh, Berlin zone boundary, and here the dispersion should be flat. And uh, if you look at this x point here, the dispersion is indeed uh, flat. Uh, and similar is the case for this L point here. So at L point, you do have a dispersion which is flat. Uh, but the dispersion at K point, which is represented here, it's not flat. And the reason here is this K point is not in the center of two neighboring lattice point. And th that's why the dispersion is not flat. But dispersion is normally flat where the neighboring point uh, at the mid of two neighboring lattice point. So, uh, but then you have this small segment uh, Kx, uh, which represent uh, going from K to X uh, of the neighboring uh, zone. So uh, if you represent, let, uh, so let, if let's say K is a point somewhere here at the edge, then as you move along, if you keep on moving, so you start from gamma point, you reach here the, L, uh, the K point, and as you move further, you would reach the, the X point of the uh, neighboring br uh, brilliant zone uh, that so that's this part of the dispersion it represents that thing so again at x as you go from k to x of the neighboring zone the dispersion at x again becomes uh, flat uh, at the brilliant zone boundary so uh, these are the various um, parts of this dispersion uh, now you can identify different branches in the phonon dispersion here uh, we can think of the phonon dispersion, uh, this, this is a phonon dispersion, uh, and we know it by different ways. One of the ways is uh, here is that the dispersion around gamma point is almost linear, as you can see here. So this is almost linear, uh, such a linear dispersion uh, very rarely uh, doesn't occur for electrons. Uh, electrons for k equals zero should be parabolic, so if it is linear, it, uh, so as you can see here, or you can see here, at both positions it's linear, it means that it's a phonon dispersion and not an electron dispersion. The other point is this energies. So these energies uh, here are represented in per centimeter. So per centimeter is one way of representing energies. So there are usually three different ways in spectroscopy. Either you represent, or four other, uh, represent energies either in uh, electron volts, or milli electron volts in the case here of phonons. So phonons would be a few milli electron volts, or you can represent it in frequency, which would be in this case of a phonon a few terahertz, or you can also represent it in terms of per centimeter, which uh, per centimeter would be a number of years per unit length, in this case centimeters. So these frequencies uh, in per centimeter here are infrared frequencies uh, in the infrared. So uh, this, if the if energies are in the infrared, uh, either in the mid infrared or far infrared, then it means that uh, the energies you have here is that of phonons. The electronic energy are usually in a few electron volts, a three order of magnitude higher than these energies. So uh, okay, now coming to what branches there are. So uh, you can see if you look at the wave, uh, phonon waves, which move in the 111 direction, then uh, this wave, uh, it uh, has a longitudinal acoustic branch and a transverse acoustic branch. And the transverse acoustic branch has only one branch. It would mean that the two transverse branches are uh, degenerate. Or in other words, uh, if a wave move in 111 direction, the springs, uh, which are the transverse spring constant, they are uh, exactly the same in the two transverse directions. 
similarly, the optical branch uh, have an uh, LO branch and a TO branch. There's a type over here. So you have again the uh, the two transverse uh, branches are uh, degenerate over here. Uh, similar is the case if you uh, if the phonon moves from uh, along the uh, K direction which represent the one zero zero direction but if the phonons move along the uh, one one zero direction then the, the two transverse waves are not uh, degenerate and you have the longitudinal acoustic and the one transverse acoustic and the other transverse acoustic and similarly the transverse optical branches they also split into the two transverse branches so that's why you have uh, six six different um, energies in this region but uh, four energies here because of the degeneracy present in the crystal system one important another important detail here is the gamma point so at gamma point uh, the uh, optical branches they are degenerate the transverse optical and the longitudinal optical and this only occurs for uh, covalent um, crystal so you you see a similar scenario here where the transverse optical and the longitudinal optical they are degenerate over here so it would mean that this crystal is a covalent crystal and indeed diamond is as covalent as it comes so that's a, a pretty perfect observation here that uh, this they are degenerate at gamma points or at k equals to zero these two branches the optical branches when uh, the crystal is um, covalent. Now look at uh, the electronic uh, bands of the same diamond crystal. So it's again shown over here. Uh, now you can see the gamma points. If you look at the gamma point, uh, the dispersions are parabolic. So you can see the dispersion at Gis gamma is uh, parabolic. Here again, uh, parabolic. So you have all these different uh, bands now giving uh, due to the overlap of different orbitals uh, in the diamond. So in diamond, what you do have is uh, an sp3 hybridization, and as a result of sp3 hybridization, um, the valence band, uh, the valence uh, shell uh, has four sp3 hybridized uh, orbitals and they these sp3 hybridized orbitals they form uh, eight different bands uh, which are shown here so uh, you have this gamma l part of the dispersion uh, and this gamma l part it represent uh, uh, this all the electronic waves now which propagate along the 111 direction so starting from k equals to zero to k to l where uh, k is simply uh, pi by e where e is the periodicity along one 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 direction uh, so again at the brilliance at the l point these dispersions are flat which means that the uh, that the <clears throat> velocity of electronic waves for this k values is zero so they won't propagate uh, within this solid uh, the, the rest of the k values would in this uh, particular direction uh, <clears throat> similarly you can have gamma x direction so gamma x direction would represent the electronic wave which propagate along one zero uh, one, one, one zero zero direction or along those uh, 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 planes uh, planes perpendicular uh, along directions which are perpendicular to one zero zero planes and the rest is the same so the electronic structure is a little bit more complicated because there are many many different orbitals involved and the, it may be hard to uh, hard to decipher or hard to understand what's going in there uh, plus electrons have uh, a lot of other effects as well for example in the case of diamond or uh, in structure like this uh, you can have other effect in your um, crystal apart from the periodic potential for example you can have spin orbit coupling and uh, exchange interaction and different types of electronic interaction which can complicate your spectra so electronic spectra are usually not easy uh, electronic uh, dispersion is not, e not usually easy to um, understand but 
you can at least see a few uh, important features here. Uh, another important feature here is this energy range. You can see that those energies are few electron volts. So in the case of a diamond, uh, these bands which are until this uh, energy is zero, they are all of these bands are filled and these energies which are above here, these energies are unfilled. So this would be, this would form your um, valence band and this would form your conduction band and the energy difference is more uh, than five electron volts over here. So a diamond is definitely uh, an insulator and uh, not a semiconductor. So you do have a band gap and on top of the band gap, the band gap is larger than uh, three electron volts. So it is an insulator, which indeed it is. We'll look at a slightly different uh, atom, uh, crystal, and that is that of gallium arsenide crystal, uh, a crystal which is a very important crystal structure for different um, electronic devices like uh, these, uh, the lasers, these small lasers which you have, uh, and uh, other optoelectronic devices. So it has again uh, a structure which is an FCC-like uh, with a basis which consists of two atoms, but this time these two atoms are not the same just like we had in the case of a diamond, but in this case the basis consists of two atoms which are different. One is a gallium atom and the other is an arsenic atom and this forms a gallium arsenide crystal. So you have an FCC crystal, uh, FCC lattice with a basis consists of two different atoms. So you, you, you can imagine that this would be a crystal which would have uh, not a covalent bonding but rather more ionic like bonding because one is more electronegative than another. So uh, because it's an FCC lattice, uh, what you would have is uh, you, the brilliant zone we are interested in would be the brilliant zone of the FCC. And because you have a lattice which consists of two bases, uh, then you would have both the optical branch and the acoustic branch present uh, in, uh, for this system. Um, and uh, going from gamma to L, uh, again, you have uh, where L is the 1 1 1 direction, you have four branches. Uh, and going from gamma to X, again, you have four branches, would mean that uh, the, the two transverse acoustic branches and the transverse optical branches, they are degenerate, just like we've seen before. Uh, but the important thing here is at the gamma point, the LO branch and the TO branch, they, have, they are non degenerate. They have different energies and which would mean that it has an ionic character as uh, you would expect for gallium arsenide. Just like for a diamond, uh, the gamma K uh, region of the dispersion, it shows you have six different uh, phonon branches, which would uh, mean that the uh, true transverse uh, directions, uh, they are non-degenerate in this direction as we had in carbon as well. So if you move along 100, zero, zero, which is basically your K value, K represents a 110 direction. In that direction, these two transverse uh, directions are not um, uh, degenerate. This is the uh, electronic band structure for the same um, crystal calculated by density functional theory. And you can see all these different bands uh, which are present here. Uh, I won't go into the details why they are found, but they are found by overlap of different orbitals uh, present in this gallium and arsenide combination. And you have all those different. Uh, so again, around gamma points, you have um, uh, the parabolic dispersion, which would mean that it is indeed an electronic dispersion. Uh, and uh, what you have is uh, up to the energy zero, all these energies are energy bands are filled in gallium arsenide. We know already know the way how to fill these gaps, uh, these bands, and then uh, you have all these bands above which are unfilled. So these are the conduction band, these are the valence band, and the minimum of the conduction band and the maximum of the valence band. They have an energy difference of 1.4 electron volt, uh, which would mean that 
it is a semiconductor. So, so semiconductor of a specific kind, which is called as direct band semiconductor, because the minima of the conduction band and the maxima of the valence band lie at the same uh, k value, which is the gamma point. Let's have a look at another uh, lattice type uh, that is uh, that of a uh, simple cubic system. Uh, so we have already seen such a, a cubic system uh, in the case of a cesium chloride, which is a simple cubic system consisting of a basis of two atoms um, so that the unit cell consists of two atoms and one basis and the basis consists of a cesium atom and a chlorine atom. So, since it's a simple cubic system, the brilliant zone would also be that of a simple cubic, uh, given by these uh, critical points uh, and one lattice point in the middle, gamma. So, this defined your uh, uh, brilliant zone in the reciprocal space. So, since the uh, basis consists of two points, two atoms, then you should, uh, uh, in the phonon dispersion, you expect uh, two branches, uh, both the acoustic branch and the um, uh, optical branch. Uh, but these, the arrangement of these points is differently now. So you have gamma point, uh, and then from gamma to R, it would represent all the k values which lies uh, on this path from gamma to R. And R represent a direction, uh, one, one, one direction, which is in the cubic system is perpendicular to one, one, one plane. Uh, just remember that uh, this may not be true for all the lattice system. It's only specific for uh, cubic systems uh, uh, and may not be true for all Bravi lattices that uh, an HKL uh, plane uh, is perpendicular to HKL direction. It's only true for uh, cubic system. So, uh, R, gamma R represent all the K values uh, which are propagating along the 111 direction or uh, perpendicular to plane 111. Uh, where, uh, uh, as you move along this line or as you move from gamma to R, uh, the wavelength decreases until at R the wavelength is exactly equal to the interatomic distance or interplanar distance along one 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 direction and that's where the dispersion becomes flat and uh, this gamma m would represent the uh, uh, the case where uh, the wave is propagating along one one zero direction uh, in the case of a simple cubic system the M represent a point which is uh, a midpoint between low two lattice points in the neighboring uh, brilliant zone. So one point, a lattice point is a gamma point, the next one will be in the next. And M is uh, for the simple cubic case is indeed in the center. So that's why the dispersion is again flat at M point as well. Uh, then you have gamma to X uh, part of the dispersion where uh, which represent waves which move along the 110 direction or which simply move along uh, either this direction or this direction uh, in the text. Uh, so that would um, represent these four different uh, waves. Uh, so there are cer certain other, other branches like from R uh, to X which would represent uh, all those K values from R to X and from X to M, uh, X uh, from uh, X M to R, which would be representing this part. But the important thing here to note is that uh, in the phonon dispersion uh, for gamma to R, which is uh, representing the one, one, one direction, these waves have only four different energies, uh, which means that the transverse waves are, uh, uh, transverse waves are degenerate. Uh, important thing here is uh, there, this very large splitting um, between the uh, optical branches, the longitudinal and transverse optical branches. Uh, this is quite large. If you look into the whole schemes, it would point out that this crystal has a very large ionic character, uh, which is obviously uh, in the case of a cesium chloride, it's true. Uh, 
so this uh, again you can see this large splitting between these transverse optical and longitudinal optical uh, here as well in uh, in this branch uh, so in the case of uh, uh, gamma m where m is the motion along 100 the transverse uh, the degeneracy of the transverse uh, waves are are lifted and they do have different energies uh, which means that they would have uh, uh, there are six different branches along 110 or six different energies which are uh, which the phonon wave can take uh, when moving in this direction within the cesium chloride crystal last thing um, uh, this is the dispersion the electronic band of the silicon so usually these are calculated by computational methods and one of the other thing which is usually calculated with this electronic band is uh, the density of states so you have these uh, for silicon you have uh, these eight bands which are present here and uh, then it's plotted uh, this the silicon has a diamond like structure but instead of carbon atoms uh, it has um, uh, silicon instead uh, so these are the density of states uh, which are also usually calculated and uh, let's say density of state at uh, this energy would be the density of state of all these different bands which is at that particular energy and similarly if uh, the density of state at this energy would be the sum of the density of state of all these different energies so uh, these peaks uh, in the density of states uh, which occurs uh, at these sharp values they represent the van Hoff singularities uh, where the effective mass uh, of the electrons become undefined. So you, you might see these uh, delta points here, uh, so-called uh, singularity points. But the important thing here is the, the at some point the density of states is completely zero like here or like here. So in silicon all these bands up till here are filled uh, so these bands are all uh, filled bands and these bands which are above the zero line are unfilled bands. So you do have uh, a band gap over here uh, between the filled and unfilled uh, bands. This would be the valence band and this would form the conduction band. The minimum of the conduction band is here and the maximum of the valence band is here. So this uh, forms a semiconductor. Uh, because the band gap seems to be less than two, it is around 1.1 electron volt. And uh, import, but uh, the main difference with gallium arsenide is these two, the maxima and the minima here are not at the same value, k value, but rather they are different. K value. These are called as indirect semiconductors. And you can see that the density of states between the top of the conduction, the bottom of the conduction band, and the top of the valence band, it is zero which means that there are no states lying here and that's define your band gap so the density of states can provide important information uh, about the uh, the material and uh, is responsible for different uh, properties like optical properties so this is something which is additionally usually measured when band structures are calculated